I've been looking forward to this one for a while. Here it is, Mickey Mania. Now, I'll hold my hands up and admit it, I'm a huge fan of Mickey Mouse. Now, obviously I'm not one to go and buy everything Mickey Mouse related, but I always keep an eye out for good Mickey Mouse games, and this is my favourite one to date. Mickey Mania is an interesting experience for anyone who has had the privilege to have played it. The original idea was to release a game in 1993 as part of Mickey's 65th birthday, but this project was dropped because with the time given, it would have given the developers only 6 months to make it, and 6 months was not nearly enough for a 16-bit game. So the concept was altered. Instead of making a game celebrating Mickey's 65th, Mickey would travel back in time and take a look back at his most famous cartoons. Yeah, so as I said, I've been looking forward to this for a while, so... Come on, let's just stop yakking and just get on with it. So here's the first level. Already I'm impressed. The level is based upon Steamboat Willie, the first Mickey Mouse cartoon, and it looks pretty cool. We have the black and white backgrounds, uniquely animated characters like the tune, and we have some interesting music. Anyways, let's talk about the controls. They're good. You can move left and right with no trouble at all. You can jump just fine. Uh, you can jump quite high as well. You use the B button to throw marbles at enemies, provided you actually have some at the time. Anyway, even if you don't, you can always just jump on them. Sweet! Also, notice that while travelling through this level, colour is gradually added to the scenery the more you proceed. Isn't that interesting? Anyway, the first level boss is a crane operating system. Yeah, that's odd, but never mind. You just destroy the four operator gears and then you find Steamboat Willie nearby. Hooray! Stage complete. Now for level two. Oh my god, it's the Mad Doctor! Boy, this is gonna be fun. We have bats, we have skeletons, we have spiders, we have saws, we have spikes, we have barrels, we have lava pits, we have acid pits, and... Uh, no, that's pretty much it. Well, this level is hard. You can get killed pretty easily here. Oh, damn! Speaking of dying, there's something funny about this. When you reach a checkpoint, uh, the fireworks in this game, if you die, you aren't sent back to where you got the firework. You wake up where you left off. Isn't that just awesome? I sure think so! Then we have a stairwell. It's in a kind of nebulous style, which is pretty cool. Then we have to survive the ascent of a skeleton infested lift shaft. The skeletons are difficult to escape from because their bones hurt you whenever they touch you. Now we're in a laboratory, and we have to fill this beaker with a potion and place it on the Bunsen burner. Keeping it here for a short time will cause the beaker to explode, opening the locked door on the right. So we run down here into the main lab, and here's the Mad Doctor. The animation on how he moves is cool. This is what cartoons of the 30s were like. It's awesome. Here's level 3, Moose Hunters. And there's really no obstacles or puzzles, just run to the right and end of the stage, then play a semi-3D stage where you run away from a moose. Just keep getting apples to go faster, not much else to do. Level 4, The Lonesome Ghosts. This is where the game becomes a real challenge. It's so hard in this area! There are ghosts trying to hit you at every possibility, there are stairs turning into slides, there are some weird platforms. I can't think of any other word to describe this level, except... Annoying! Speaking of annoying, the following stage begins with water filling the room. You have to run on barrels to get through, and there are ghosts blocking your path, and yep, you guessed it, the barrels sink. Do you think the ghosts of the barrels aren't hard enough? But that's not all! You have to get the last barrel to be in a certain place so that the water empties into the floor, allowing you to move on. But sometimes you can screw up, and if you do, you're practically finished. But if you make it, you're greeted with a firework. Let's say that you got lucky, and you're through the goat's lair. You will then find yourself in level 5, Mickey and the Beanstalk. Here, we get some more nice puzzles to get through the level, like moving plants under running water, or jumping on seeds to produce platforms. As a whole, this stage is probably the easiest in the whole game, with one exception, the tunnel. This part is an absolute nightmare. You have these beetles, which can't be killed at all. You can't jump on them, you can't use marbles, you can't do anything to them. They're practically invincible. Then you have baby spiders, which are equally as annoying to avoid. Then there's the switch you jump on. 
What do I do now? Well, we'll go back and jump down a hole. Ooh, what's this switch over here? Whoa! Stick a turkey in a time warp! A giant spider?! How do we get out of this one?! Okay, keep moving right, keep moving right, keep moving right, keep, 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 no, 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 no! What the crap?! Hang on, I have to do the whole level again? Oh, well, it's, it's a small price to pay for dying. Okay, we're back at the spider, so let's try throwing marbles on it. Well, they don't do anything either! Oh, not again! <sighs> this is practically impossible! How could I not outrun that thing? That's just not fair! No, 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 no. There must be a way around it. There must be. Okay, let's hope I'm a third time lucky. Here we go again. Hmm, I have an idea. Let's try jumping on the ladybug. You just jump on the ladybug. You just jump on the ladybug. Well, that was blatantly obvious! I should have tried that from the start! Now I've lost two lives! They could have been of some value later on! That sucks! Oh well. Here we are in the final level. The Prince and the Pauper. Your first objective is to rescue Pauper Mickey. Then you have to go and rescue the Prince from the dungeon. After this we have another stairwell, which is another nightmare. Spiked boulders fall down the stairs of the tower, and whilst avoiding them, you also have to keep moving because fire comes up the tower. It's like everybody's ganging up on me here! It's not fair! Leave me alone! The next part comes to no surprise. Just reach the end, killing weasels. Then finally, we come to the biggest, meanest Pete of all. Big and mean. Well, I would hardly say big and mean. He's more of a big, fat, rounded, sword-wielding moron. Go figure. Anyway, I've only got one life left, so let's make it count. You get him to jump, then a spiky thing appears. You push it so that Pete lands on it. Simple. Oh no, I only have one hit left. So let's make it count. Come on, Mike. Go, go, go. No! He got me! No. That means... Game over. With all that hard work? Getting that far in the game? And now it's all... over. Just do a dramatic thing. Oh god, no. Please forget it. It never happened. It never happened, alright? Besides, there is a continue option. Yeah, there's a continue option. <laughs> this time we're going for it. No prisoners taken! And that's the end of the game! Uh, well done, Mickey! Hey, hold on! I was the one playing! They've given that mouse all the credit and they don't give a monkeys about poor old me! Ah, oh, well, I guess it's just another bad ending game to add to the pile. Well, that's it. Mickey Mania for the Sega Mega Drive. It's one of the best Mega Drive games out there, so... Mega Drive players, if you don't have this game, get it! Of course, there are three other versions of the game as well.
Yeah, the game was released four times. First we have the Mega Drive version, then we have the Super Nintendo, Sega CD and PlayStation versions. The games were almost identical, but there are differences. How so? Well, we'll discuss it next time.